Hello, and welcome to the SOA's first interactive leader session of 2012. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Pat Gould, Managing Director of Marketing and Communications at the SOA. If you need technical assistance at any time today, click the live support button in the bottom left area of your screen or send an email to soa at compartners.com. You can also download the slides by clicking on the download presentation button next to the live support button at the bottom left area of the screen. I'd like to introduce the SOA leaders on today's call. We have Brad Smith, President of the SOA, and Tanya Manning, President-Elect of the SOA. Today, Brad is going to kick off this session by discussing the SOA's new general insurance track. Tanya will cover some enhancements to SOA.org, and she will also talk about the development of the 2013 through 2016 strategic plan. Then we'll give a few additional updates from the SOA. But finally, we will allow time for questions that you can submit during this webinar, as well as some that were submitted in advance. And you can enter a question for us at any time by clicking the Ask a Question box area, type in your question, and then hit the Go button next to the box. If you don't have a specific question, you can ask us to address a general topic. You can also download the slides, as I said, by clicking on the Download Presentation button. This webinar will be archived soon on the SOA website. At the end of the call, we will ask you to take a very short survey about today's session. This will help us learn what you liked, what you didn't like, and what you'd like to see in future sessions like this. With that, I'll now hand it over to Brad Smith to talk about the general insurance track. Thanks, Pat. As you alluded to, the, um, in March, the board approved the creation of a new track in general insurance or property and casualty insurance. This will help the SOA achieve its strategic vision of being the leading global provider of actuarial education. Just last month, um, due to my commercial responsibilities, I was in Saudi Arabia. Uh, I invited uh, Greg Heydrich, the Executive Director uh, of the Society, and, and, and Ken Guthrie, Managing Director of Education, to that, to that meeting um, because I w had scheduled a meeting with the Director of Insurance and Banking of the Saudi Arabia Monetary Authority and his staff. The insurance industry in Saudi Arabia has grown substantially in recent years and is expected to continue to grow in the foreseeable future. Consequently, the director is interested in developing a robust actuarial profession in Saudi Arabia. Currently, there's one member that resides in Saudi Arabia and, and one student. The, the profession is virtually non-existent today. The insurance industry in Saudi Arabia is currently dominated by health and casualty coverages, representing over 90% of the, the premium revenue. It's very consistent with other developing countries where non-life coverages are first to emerge as a citizenry enters the middle class. You know, we all talk about globalization, and that, that's, um, it, we have different meanings for it, but as I've traveled around the world over the last several years, what, what I think is the, the understated uh, issue with respect to globalization is the massive migration of the middle class from the rural poor in the developing countries. In reality, the, the, we call them developing countries, and in, in, in the urban areas, quite frankly, they're, they're virtually as developed a, a, as we are in North America. It's this migration of the middle class to, or the middle of, of the rural poor to the middle class that creates massive opportunities. It's certainly, the case in China, where the sale of automobiles to the emerging middle class is exploding. The same is true in India, and, and the same is true in, in Saudi Arabia. So, consequently, the demand for actuarial talent in developing countries is initially focused on casualty insurance. The regulators in, in, in those developing countries are particularly worried uh, because they've had some experience with um, under-reserving of these coverages. If you think about the massive growth, the growth that happens in these coverages, it, it's easy for, to appear uh, profitable when uh, you are fundamentally unprofitable due to under-reserving. If you haven't developed a professional actuarial um, uh, presence, uh, it, Prior to the, the growth of this insurance, the, the industry itself can be um, severely damaged by what I would call stupid or unaware competitors, competitors that essentially under-reserve their, their coverages and underprice their coverages appear to, to be profitable because the, the math, massive growth, and once that growth levels off, 
um, you you end up with uh, um, you know uh, the, the the realization that in fact the, the the coverage was unprofitable. This forces the 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 educated competitors to either uh, match the, uh, the 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 uneducated competitors in price uh, and and can lead to severe damage uh, in the long run to the industry. So the regulators in all of these are very interested in the development of a strong actuarial profession, and it and 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 the lead is typically or historically the lead has been casualty coverage. That's where, in fact, the growth of the actuarial profession in the near term, the next five to ten years, lies, and that's the opportunity that the board saw when it decided to offer uh, the general insurance track. Tanya, I know you have strong uh, uh, thoughts on this. Do you uh, want to jump in? Um, sure. Thanks, Brad. Um, and, and, Brad, you did a good job of talking about the international focus of adding this general insurance track. Um, I think it's important to recognize that this has benefits to all candidates, not just the candidates who are um, practicing in inter um, outside of the United States or Canada. Um, for example, we know that this is going to allow candidates now to have more time before they have to commit to a particular specialty track decision. So, um, and that's because they're going to be able to pursue their whole education pathway through a single society. And we'll also give our candidates opportunities to learn about all the different practice areas and in the process of getting ready to select a specialty track. So there's a lot of advantages to um, the, to candidates just in general, as well as um, better positioning us to take advantage of all those opportunities you were talking about in the um, growing parts of the world and the developing countries. So I think it's going to be a very nice way for us to position ourselves best to continue to grow our profession and also to um, um, help our candidates have better opportunities to make choices in their career tracks. Absolutely, and it helps the, uh, the domestic actuaries in, in, in that are practicing in, in, in North America because uh, making the Society of Actuaries uh, credentials the leading credential in, 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 in the world uh, is certainly uh, beneficial to, to everyone. I think the, the question on, on some members' minds, we've gotten a number of, of, of questions, is, is what makes the, the Society of Actuaries think that it's uh, qualified to do this? And I, and I think one of the elements, that, one of the very compelling elements is, is our, our growing international presence. Um, using very round numbers, we have approximately 23,000 23, members, about 4,000 of those reside in, in Canada, and about 3,000 reside outside the U.S. and outside of Canada. 3,000. When you compare that with, um, with uh, the CAS, for instance, the CAS has approximately um, 300 members outside the United States and Canada, and approximately 100 of those members are in Bermuda, uh, leaving it with 200 members outside the U.S. and Canada. So, so they are not; they have not penetrated that international market uh, nearly as much. And 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 uh, one of the concerns that that we have, obviously, is that um, uh, that, that that we participate. Uh, um, the U.S.-based uh, actuarial profession participates in that growth and not leave. Uh, leave that growth to the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries and the Institute of uh, Actuaries in, in Australia and others that are focusing on that growth. So I think our presence, our capabilities, our infrastructure, our uh, you know status in the rest of the world uh, has led us to believe that 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 uh, we'll, we'll be very successful in this this endeavor. Um, Tanya talked about the, the, some of the reasons that uh, that make this uh, very attractive to candidates. I mean, it, you know, I've talked uh, uh, during my uh, presidential term uh, to many universities uh, uh, um, and some uh, 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 within the U.S., a lot within the U.S., and, and, and a number outside the U.S., and, and I hear the desire of those students, uh, very bright students, saying, hey, I want to defer the, the question of what – discipline I go into uh, as long as possible. We think that uh, 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 offering all disciplines of actuarial science within the Society of Actuaries will facil facilitate that. We've heard a number of, I've heard a number of them say, I would like to be a specialist in more than one. Uh, you hear about kids uh, 
uh, having double majors, well, uh, th- this is very similar to uh, uh, by offering all disciplines within one organization, we'll be, offering, uh, be able to offer that opportunity to uh, students looking to, to participate or, or have expertise in, 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 in more than one practice area. Um, What's the timing of this? Uh, the, the first general insurance track specific exams and e-learning modules is expected to be made available to candidates beginning with the fall of 2013 exams. Um, can we pull this off? I mean, certainly there's execution risk. We understand that. There's, execu- there's risk in everything. But I've been incredibly gratified and, and, and uh, very pleasantly surprised with the, the number of people experts in the field with, with very severe um, um, knowledge and experience in the, uh, uh, in the general insurance field that, that have uh, stood up, raised their hand, and said, hey, I want to participate th- in this. This is an exciting endeavor that, uh, that I want to be a part of. In fact, uh, later today, I'm, I'm leaving for Hong Kong. Uh, uh, Greg and I will be meeting with uh, students and with uh, uh, members in, in Hong Kong and meeting uh, with a number of universities. And uh, just this morning, uh, the, the society staff has had conversations with uh, a, a, a Hong Kong actuarial professor that's, that stood up, raised his hand, and said, hey, I want to be part of this. So, so from the standpoint of, of having people willing to participate and and our ability to produce a superior, very uh, quality program that meets all of the qualification standards, uh, I feel incredibly comfortable uh, about that. That. What about the cost? Are the costs manageable? I mean, clearly we're making an investment. That investment, I think, will will pay dividends uh, uh, both to our members, uh, strengthening our credential and and financially. Uh, very conservative estimates that uh, Stacy Lynn and her staff have performed uh, with the. Uh, the education exec group uh, show us to uh, recoup our initial cost uh, by the year 2017. So if essentially a, a, a three and a half year payback to our uh, to our initial investment. Um, quite frankly, I think that the bigger risk for us was not pers- the, the risk of not pursuing this opportunity at all. I've been involved with the Society of Actuaries and a leadership team since since 19 off and on since 1996. Um, and over that 16-year period, I can tell you that that I think that this was the the most important strategic issue that the Society of Actuaries Board has faced, and and um, it, you know it stood up and said, yes, there's risk, yes, but there's opportunity, and and, and let's go for it. And and I think that, that uh, members, once they learn uh, 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 about what we're doing, will be equally excited. You know, some have, 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 have said, well, is this tied to the consolidation uh, proposal, Brad, that you made uh, at the annual meeting? And, and, and I, would say, um, it's a, I would say, actually, the consolidation proposal was tied to this, that if you go back and look at my uh, remarks at the annual meeting, uh, one of the primary reasons for offering the uh, uh, or uh, considering consolidation was the need for for uh, us to, um, uh, the Society of Actuaries, to offer uh, a, a general insurance track. So, so clearly, um, once the, 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 the CAS communicated to us uh, that they weren't interested, that they were interested in remaining independent, um, and, they've, and, and they've done that uh, now uh, uh, immediately, uh, their, their board has made a public announcement uh, a couple weeks after uh, my annual meeting address indicating that, they subsequently contacted us a, a couple, a few weeks later, and said, "No, we would like to talk about it." We talked about it, um, and um, and they just said, "No, we, we we've decided. We appreciate talk, you talking to us. It's all very cordial, but um, uh, they want uh, uh, they want to remain independent. Uh, it's a strategic objective of theirs." And um, since um, in March, when we announced the uh, uh, our intention uh, to. Um, Offer a general insurance track. Uh, they reiterated their desire to 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 remain independent. Um, as an aside, uh, I will mention that uh, when we talked about consolidation, I told them that one of our our great motivations was was uh, being able to offer all you know 
uh, education and examination and continuing education in all actuarial disciplines, and that um, absent that, uh, 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 absent consolidation, we would certainly consider this. So this uh, uh, should not, and I don't believe, did come as a, uh, a surprise to the CAS. I, you know, uh, I've received some criticism, and, and I understand it, uh, um, that we're trying to, uh, uh, that this is somehow tied to consolidation, and, and this is, it's, it's, not, it's not other than the fact, uh, the need for the Society of Actuaries to offer uh, uh, a casualty uh, uh, insurance track or general insurance track. This is about the Society of Actuaries moving forward, the actuarial profession moving forward, and uh, we understand that, that the CAS, and we understand and, and, and respect uh, the, the, the CAS desire to, to, to remain independent, and we expect we've had a longstanding collaborative relationship with the CAS that remains strong. We continue to work with them on a number of projects. Will our competitive na nature uh, uh, increase uh, because of this? I, I, I'm sure, but I'm hoping that, uh, you know, the term that became popular a few years ago, co-op, Cooperation will, uh, uh, you know, uh, reflect our continuing uh, collaborative uh, efforts with the CAS. Um, like I said, uh, Greg and I will be uh, heading to Hong Kong and uh, communicating this, and 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 we're anxious uh, in an effort to hear everybody's feedback. We're anxious to, to, for feedback, and uh, uh, we encourage you to participate in the blogs and and and, and uh, you know, email us directly, call us directly. The SOA is um, um, having an education update webcast that will go into a lot of the details with respect to our ability to do this, what our plans are. And for those of you that are interested, uh, the webcast is on May 2nd um, on the changes to the education system, which includes the requirement, new requirements for the CERA credential and changes to the fellowship level tracks and, 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 and obviously an update on the uh, general insurance track. Um, anyone currently involved in the, edu in the examination process, anyone who oversees candidates or those interested in changes to the requirements for CERA and, and uh, fellowship uh, is welcome to attend the webcast, and you can uh, register for the webcast on the uh, SOA website. I know, I know there will be more discussion about general insurance in the Q&A portion, but uh, before we get to the Q&A, we have a few additional items to to cover, so I'll turn it over to Tanya to talk about some important enhancements we've made to the website, SOA.org. Tanya? All right. Thanks, Brad. I'm going to talk about some enhancements that we've made to the SOA.org website, and I'm betting everyone listening in is familiar with the SOA.org website and has accessed that site for some reason or another, um, perhaps to look up information on exams or professional development opportunities or to access research. Um, you may have even went there to look at um, information on changes to the exam requirements, like Brad had just mentioned, which will be updated to reflect all of that, of course. Well, I'm excited and pleased to announce that we have completed um, some significant enhancements that are going to improve your experience as a user of that website. And um, what this is going to do is it's going to make it easier for you basically to find stuff out on that website. And I know I have gone out there and done some searches, and it's taken me a few, more than one attempt to kind of narrow down what I'm looking for. Well, the SOA website has been um, enhanced so that it's going to be more of a powerful ability to search through all the different information. I think one of the best things that the SOA.org website does is it allows us a way to disseminate our intellectual capital, and that's one of the one of the most important strategic um, objectives that we have at the Society of Actuaries. So um, we've got some enhancements out there. So let's look a little bit in more detail at what these enhancements are. And the first one is we are refining. Um, you're going to now be able to refine your search results. And that is um, very important so that you can go and drill down into a particular topic. And you can look at your results by um, competency, content type, publication name, author and or file or type. So this is going to help you refine your search results so that you can kind of narrow in on what you're looking for. 
Now, something else that I think is very good is you're going to have more detailed search results. So once you go through your search and you're able to narrow in on what you're looking for and you get a list that you think is pretty close to um, converging on the topic that you're looking for, you're going to have more detailed search results that will give you an idea as far as which of those items that have shown up in the results is really what you're actually looking for. And this is going to include details like the title, the description, who the authors are if you're looking for a paper, for example, the date of publication, which is very important. And um, it's also going to be assigned a topic and competency, and that's going to be included as well. Um, and not only will it have all this extra detail to help you determine if it is what you're actually looking for, but you're also going to be able to sort the results of your search. And you can do that by relevance, date, or you can even do it al um, alphabetically. So lots of good things as far as going through your search results. Now, if you don't want to go through the normal search result, the search process, you can always just do a browse by topic. And if you look at the top left side of the homesoa.org website, there's a little box at the top called Quick Search. And if you click on the second red lined item underneath that browse by topic, that's going to bring up what I'm talking about, where you're going to be able to look through things, um, topics sorted. Um, going to be looking through the different topics that we have organized the website in. All right, now looking at this web, this is another shot of our website when you go into that browse by topic section. If you look at that second paragraph, it uses a word called taxonomy topic. And this is below, um, you can um, select different things to browse by taxonomy topic. And I would say that the, the folks here at the SOA and on the leadership team are pretty much in two camps. One camp is the folks who know what taxonomy topics are, and the other is um, what is taxonomy topics or they're not very familiar. And you can probably um, divide that group up by when they got their FSA. But I think most people are getting more familiar with the taxonomy topic. Basically what it is is we're going out and all of the content that we have on the website, we're giving them tags as far as what they kind of relate to. Um, I, I went to another trusted website. Um, second most trusted website to SOA.org, and that was Wikipedia.org, to make sure I understood what taxonomy was. And um, it actually referred to me to biological classification, so I abandoned that. And I'm going back to what my gut feeling and my general understanding is, is that's where you're just looking at ways that you're classifying. Um, you have a predetermined system of ways that you're classifying all the information that you've got out on all the various pages of your website. And if you go into these different topics, you can, push on the, you can click on those little um, plus signs to the left of the topic and it'll, it'll expand out into different subtopics, and you can decide what you're looking for um, underneath each of those different topics that we've selected in our taxonomy. So that's going to help it if you're just trying to browse through and see like, what information do we have, for example, on long-term care. You can just um, expand that topic and go for it and see what's out there on our website. Now, um, the last thing I'm going to talk about is the professional development calendar. And I think this is a wonderful enhancement. It used to be when you would go and look at all of the professional development opportunities that the SOA is providing, and there is quite a bit. There's a lot going on. You would just get to this very long list of items that would have dates um, referenced with each item. Um, now you can actually get a calendar view, which I think is more typical of how you see events um, communicated in websites. So this is a very nice addition, and you can get a very easy visual understanding of what the different topics are and when they're coming about. Um, you can also do things such as a calendar search option, and that's going to be added in the near future. And you can filter your event results by month, week, or day. So there's lots of um, enhancements here so that you can find these um, professional development opportunities and just visually be able to sort through them um, pretty easily. So with all of these enhancements, um, this is just one way that the SOA is striving to provide um, more value to our members. And we think it's going to help the users of our website to more easily find all the great content that we have out there that's been developed by both our volunteers and our staff. Um, you'll be interested and hopefully as excited to know that our next step is going to be to launch a mobile-friendly version of SOA.org in the coming months. So be on the lookout for that. I'm sure it will be communicated on our now enhanced SOA.org. In the meantime, I do um, encourage you to go out there and play around with all the search results and um, see what you can find. And also, of course, check out that professional development calendar. Like I mentioned, there's a lot going on and a lot of opportunities for you. 
All right, now I'm going to switch um, gears, and we're going to talk about the 2013-2016 strategic plan for the SOA. Um, what is going on is we have a strategic plan currently in place for the Society of Actuaries, but this plan only goes through 2012, through the end of this year. So we have a group that's already started working on the strategic plan that's going to um, be in place for the terms of 2013 through 2016. And what we're, um, the, the big picture is the strategic plan is going to lay out how we're going to meet our ultimate vision, which is being the world's leading professionals in the measurement and management of risk. And it's going to meet the needs of our stakeholders as an organization, and that includes you, the members, and the candidates, and employers, the public, and other audiences, such as regulators. Now, as we're going through this process, um, the first thing that we did was we went out and we gathered input, just like any good actuary would do. We went out and got data and input, and so we talked to a lot of different people with different perspectives so that we could make sure that we had a pretty um, well-rounded um, set of views and ideas and understandings before we dwelt, we dove too far into exactly what we were going to do in updating our strategic plan. We talked to different folks like um, those who are leading section councils, uh, members of the board, members of our education executive group, folks who are on our professional development committee, nominating committee, and um, also the employers council. That We also conducted a lot of one-on-one -on -one interviews with industry leaders, and all of these folks gave us some really interesting insights. And through those conversations, we did converge on some key themes um, that are part of what we would say is our initial analysis. The first one is something that is very near and dear to me. I talked about it a lot when I was um, campaigning for my president-elect position, and I continue to be very passionate about that. And that is that we need to um, continue to be focused on expanding opportunity for actuaries in new fields. But at the same time, this has to be balanced with continuing to grow relevance and demand in our traditional markets. So our strategic plan needs to answer the question about exactly how do we do that, how do we expand those opportunities, and how do we do that while remaining very focused on what our um, traditional markets are and that we remain relevant and there's a lot of demand for actuaries. Also, there was recognition. There needs to be recognition in our new strategic plan. There is in the current, but we need to keep focusing on the fact that there is increased globalization. Brad talked about that a lot in our, um, our adding the general insurance track, but there's just a lot of expanding opportunities for actuaries um, in um, the global um, arena, so we need to make sure that we're focused on that and making sure that the SOA can add value for both North American members and the growing number of members that we have outside the U.S. and Canada. We also need to think about how the SOA can continue to attract the best and brightest or attract the most talented candidates and offer not just a great exam system and a really highly valued designation, but also a career-long learning opportunities for our members, getting back to that PD calendar that we looked at earlier. How do we make sure that that is continuing to meet the needs of our members, and also how do we make sure we get the best and brightest to come in and take our exams and eventually get their designations? Another theme was what is the best path to ensure that the SOA's research expands boundaries. We are a research and education organization. Research is an extremely important part of our mission, and we need to make sure that our strategy is helping us expand boundaries that strengthens our practice and also informs public policy so that the information that we come up with is helping policymakers make um, better decisions. Um, those are just some of the themes that have emerged, and I think they are going to all help inform us to put in place a good strategic plan that's going to keep moving our organization toward that ultimate goal of being the world's leading professionals in measurement and management of risk. Um, we will be reaching out to members. I talked about the folks that we have been reaching out for input from. Um, you are not excluded from that. The, you can always um, send us suggestions on themes that you think we should be looking at or any comments you have on the themes that I've just discussed by um, using the contact.us on the um, SOA.org website. Also, the board is going to review um, a revised draft of the strategic plan. We're going to get that in June 2012 when we have our next board meeting. And after we approve that draft, we're going to ask you, the members, to give us some input and comments. And we're going to do that in a lot of different ways. Um, there will be an opportunity to um, give your comments through the LinkedIn 
that um, SOA is very active on, and also there will be information in publications by the Society of Actuaries that will indicate how you can provide your input. Um, we really want to make sure that all of our stakeholders are giving us their thoughts on how we need to put this strategic plan in place, what revisions or additions we need to make versus what we've been focused on in the last strategic plan so that we can ultimately best serve those stakeholders. We um, will be available for comment and feedback. Um, that should happen around mid-summer, so you can expect to have us reaching out to you around mid-summer. Now, um, that's all I have on the strategic plan, so Brad, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Well, well Tanya, you know uh, uh, we've had the privilege of getting presentations from the Strategic Planning Task Force, and uh, I've seen uh, some first drafts, and uh, I, I think uh, what they're producing is incredibly exciting and, and, and ambitious, thanks to the work of Mark Friedman, who's leading that effort on the volunteer side, and, and Margaret Ann Jordan on the staff side, uh, I can't wait for it to be finalized, and I think it's going to be uh, really well received by, by the, uh, uh, the members. Uh, let's touch on a couple uh, very quick topics. We've already t talked about consolidation with respect to CAS. Uh, we did meet with the Academy in January, and uh, uh, the, the uh, essence of that meeting was, or the conclusion of that meeting, we decided that uh, uh, we would form a, a task force uh, that would focus uh, in the short term on uh, the optimum organizational structure of the actuarial, prof of the U.S.-based actuarial profession. Um, that task force, uh, uh, the, each of the uh, five organizations have, have submitted names uh, for people to be on that task force, you know, one to two names uh, from each organization. So there will be anywhere from, I would say, seven to ten members of this, all uh, uh, leaders of the actuarial profession, all very respected individuals uh, that will take on this uh, important task of kind of outlining what, how we would organize the U.S.-based actuarial profession if we were starting from a, a blank sheet of paper. Obviously, uh, uh, the conclusions that that task force draws uh, are not binding in any way on any of the organizations. All five U.S.-based organizations have agreed to participate, and their report is due uh, very close to August 1st. So they've got a lot of work to do between now and then, and um, we're looking forward uh, uh, to, to their output, and, and, and uh, uh, quite frankly, that's the next step in the process. Additionally, uh, you'll remember that uh, as a membership, you joined, uh, voted overwhelmingly in excess of 90% to support uh, uh, the development of a joint discipline uh, structure that essentially uh, would um, render uh, uh, judgments with respect to discipline issues uh, uh, to members of, uh, that belong to the uh, five uh, U.S.-based uh, actuarial organizations. We just had a meeting, a teleconference yesterday on that. That seems to be progressing uh, very well, and uh, we're expecting that to, to be in place uh, uh, mid to, to, to late summer. So uh, that is uh, going very well. And I just wanted to remind you of the spring meetings. Uh, um, that are, that are coming up, the ERM sym symposium and the life and annuity and, and health meetings. Uh, we've got great speakers and fantastic sessions lined up. Uh, be uh, worthwhile for uh, all that attend. I'll be attending each of those meetings and, and hope to see many of you there. And finally, uh, if you joined a section this year, you received a coupon for $25 off a section-sponsored webcast. Uh, only 56 people have redeemed the coupon so far, so I hope you all take advantage of that. Um, and, and, and don't forget to use the, uh, uh, your coupon for the next section-sponsored webcast. And finally, before we move to uh, questions and answers, uh, I want to mention that, 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 in fact, this is National Volunteer Week. Uh, it's not noted on a slide, but uh, or next week is National Volunteer Week. The society uh, you know, clearly is... Uh, volunteer driven we're, we're totally dependent upon uh, uh, the, the efforts of our volunteers uh, and with more than 3200 members work tirelessly to ensure the mission and vision of the Society of Actuaries is met on behalf of the board of directors uh, Tanya and myself uh, our, uh, we want to extend our thanks and appreciation for all of you that that, that do that and for those that that aren't currently volunteering we encourage you uh, again there's going to be very exciting and and uh, uh, interesting things uh, that that uh, uh, you can become involved with, and, and quite frankly, I found my uh, um, uh, involvement with the Society of Actuaries as, as some of the most uh, rewarding professional activities that uh, I've been involved with. Uh, if you're interested in becoming a volunteer, please visit uh, our website for more information. Okay, 
So Tanya and I have been talking uh, almost continuously now for 35 minutes, and we want to turn it over to Pat. We know that uh, you have submitted a, a number of questions, and uh, uh, let's get the Q&A rolling, Pat. Great. Thanks, Brad. Um, we would like now to open it up to um, a Q&A session. And again, you can submit a question by clicking on the Ask a Question box area, um, typing in your question and hitting Go. Um, and we have, as Brad said, um, had quite a few questions come in. Brad, let's start with a few, and, and Tanya, um, regarding uh, general insurance. Um, we, we've had some people write in and, and ask, um, you know, what what you would say to um, someone who is interested in pursuing um, a career in general insurance um, and is concerned about you know, being somewhat of first on the block. Um, are they going to encounter um, some, any, any sort of resistance by employers who, who might not be familiar with uh, what the SOA is offering? Well, I mean, clearly this is a new uh, uh, endeavor for the Society of Actuaries, and, and uh, we're committed to uh, uh, meeting the, 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 the qualification standards uh, of, of the United States uh, the, for the new GI track. Uh, uh, you know, we're all in with respect to that. Um, we'll um, not only meet the uh, uh, qualification standards uh, for U.S., but uh, as I talked about previously, uh, uh, the genesis of this effort was international, and, and, and uh, we're committed to meeting the qualification standards of uh, uh, the countries in which uh, our actuaries uh, practice. Uh, uh, I think it's, um, you know, let's be very clear on this. Um, we're committed that the track that, that will be, will be equal or equal um, in educational quality to every other track that we offer within the Society of Actuaries and are, and, and, and are confident that, that it will um, um, be equal to or exceed uh, the, 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 the track uh, uh, that, that, that currently qualifies uh, 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 for the U.S. and, and uh, other country standards. Um, we're all in. Uh, we believe that uh, this is um, good for the pro for the profession. It's good for professionals, actuarial professionals. It's good for SOA members. We think it will be good for um, existing casualty actuaries, um, and um, we have no doubt that uh, uh, when we look back on on our decision, you know two, three, five, ten years from now that we'll, we'll know that it's the right decision. Will there be bumps in the road? Of course there will be bumps in the road, but we're committed to minimizing those, moving forward, and, and offering uh, a track that uh, uh, we, we can all be proud of. Great. Thank you, Brad. Um, uh, let's um, let's jump around um, a little bit if we if we can. Um, Tanya, there was um, some question as to um, how um, candidates and members will be receiving information about the new track um, as it's developed. Um, and I know you and I had a discussion earlier that um, as materials are developed, we will we will get them out, but that it's a very deliberate process. Um, I would point out, too, that, that Stuart Klugman, who's our staff fellow for education, is in the room and, and might have some additional information to talk about what the process is that they're going through to develop the curriculum. <clears throat> yes, Pat. Um, as we'll, we'll do our best to make sure that members are very well informed as we progress through the development of the general insurance track. And, um, I know that some people are wondering if the members will also have access to this information, and it's not just for the candidates, but we also um, let all of our syllabus and curriculum information be made available to our members. So if you have an interest in expanding your knowledge outside your current practice area and you're a member of the SOA, you can certainly go out and perhaps even use the new enhanced search capability on the SOA website, and you can go and find some information. But we will be um, very much in front of this and making sure that you understand where we're at in the development, and you'll hear lots about it in the coming weeks. And, and it's not just for candidates. Members can certainly go back and expand their knowledge as well. Great. Thanks. Stuart, was there anything you wanted to add about the, the um, process that the Education Department will be 
pursuing over the next um, several months? Right. Our major goal for 2012, of course, is to develop the curriculum uh, for the uh, new track. Uh, that involves forming curriculum committees, identifying the learning objectives, uh, finding appropriate readings uh, for our candidates to go through, deciding how to allocate those objectives to exams and to modules, and also deciding uh, what modifications might be needed to early exams, such as the Fundamentals of Actuarial Practice course, uh, to get our candidates ready to enter this new track. We already have uh, general insurance uh, topics there, but we need to make sure they'll uh, correctly prepare candidates as they uh, move into this new opportunity. So as these are developed, uh, we'll keep the membership informed, uh, and often in manners similar to the webcast that was already mentioned, where we'll be talking about the uh, CERA and other fellowship changes coming in 2013, and we'll uh, share what we know at that time about the general insurance track uh, and, again, keep folks informed as uh, we make things more specific through this calendar year. And, Pat, I might add, certainly we've uh, heard from, from individuals that have concerns about us uh, 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 offering a general insurance track and, and logistically the, the risk involved, the, the execution risks and so forth, and hopefully we have addressed those uh, uh, adequately in here. But I want to emphasize also that we've gotten a, a, a tremendous amount of very positive feedback from some of the, the – uh, from general members and from – prior leaders of, of the Society of Actuaries that think that, that have communicated that, that this is absolutely the, the, the right thing to do and it's the right thing for the actuarial profession and will move this, the Society of Actuaries uh, forward and will benefit all Society of Actuaries members by in, enhancing the, uh, the, the value and, and, uh, of the Society of Actuaries credentials. So uh, the feedback has been, uh, there's some concern, uh, uh, like I say, I hope we're addressing those and we'll continue to address those, but overwhelmingly uh, very positive feedback with respect to this direction. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Brad. I have, like you have seen, I think we get some of the same emails, and then I get some emails individually, and, and I have gotten a lot of um, support for our expansion into this general insurance, and that has been quite rewarding, and it shows that the board is on track as far as meeting our, our vision and our mission and expanding and making sure that we're covering all types of actual practice with our designation. Great, thanks. Um, let's move on to um, a few other topics. Um, speaking of, of credentials and designations, we had a question about the um, uh, CERA credential and um, uh, whether we are um, whether we are sure that that it is um, sufficiently rigorous to meet the um, to meet the marketplace demands. And I think um, Greg Heydrich, our executive director of the SOA, had some thoughts on that. Sure, Pat. I'd be happy to, to comment on that. Our CERA standards are well recognized as rigorous. We're very proud of the work we do in that area. It's actually the same exams and the same modules as uh, people take for, uh, for the other uh, credentials, just a different combination. Uh, the SOA's uh, CERA uh, curriculum was recently reviewed by the CERA Global uh, Association and clearly identified as world class, as, as among the world leaders uh, for education in this area. That's not to say we're standing at that point, as, uh, as uh, Brad and Tanya both mentioned earlier in the cast. We're working right now on uh, uh, some changes to the exam system, which will uh, even strengthen that further by creating an ERM-only uh, exam. Uh, but uh, they're already recognized, CRA standards are already recognized as being very, very uh, high quality. Great, thanks. Um, Tanya, you know, we've talked uh, uh, quite a bit about the general insurance track. Um, you talked about the updates that are being made to the to the strategic plan, which will go into effect next year. Um, what other areas is the board focused on strategically right now? Oh, I'm so glad you asked that, Pat, because I don't want our members to think that the only thing we're looking at is the general insurance and updating our website, although those are both very important things. There's a lot of other things that are going on with the SOA. We're still um, completing our current strategic plan, and we've got some important initiatives that we're continuing to be focused on. One of them is um, a new initiative that's looking at strengthening our relationships with candidates, making sure that we have a good connection with them, and there's a lot of opportunities for them to provide input as well as us to provide information for them so that they understand not only the exam 
system, but the profession and what that can provide for them. We're also looking at providing additional professional development and research opportunities, and that's both for um, that is focused on members in Canada. We're looking at making sure that we are um, best serving their needs in those two critical areas, the professional development and research. And we're also continuing our marketing efforts to make sure that we're raising the visibility of the profession. I was excited to see that yet again on CNN, actually this was reported as one of the top five professions. I think we got number two this year, so that's pretty pretty strong. Um, but we're continuing to make our efforts to raise visibility so when we show up in that top five list of professions, everyone knows what that is and not only knows what an actuary is but understands the value that we can bring to a business. And also we're um, looking specifically at SOA members and um, the business media when we're looking at that focus because that's generally who our eventual employers are. So um, we're also doing a lot to um, provide um, some academic research, and um, so we're looking into doing that, and that's just one of the other ways that we're trying to make sure that we're expanding the boundaries of actual science. I'm glad you mentioned that, Tanya, because we, we did have a question come in about um, how we are uh, making sure that the FSA brand, you know, is, is fully understood um, within the academic community, um, and I know that, um, you know, what you just mentioned there is one thing. Was there anything else that you, um, that you wanted to add to, on that point? Well, I know that we have done a lot in establishing our centers of actual excellence, and um, that's where we're going out and recognizing stop top schools of the actual science in the U.S., Canada, and Hong Kong. We also have a Ph.D. stipend program that's supporting individuals who are looking to develop, um, to further develop their academic career in actuarial science. Um, there's more than a dozen of those, and we also have um, CAE grants to support research and education, so we're doing a lot in that area, and it's very exciting. I think the um, Center of Actual Excellence has been um, one of um, the great programs that we've recently launched, and that has done a lot to um, make these um, universities both focus on the actual science um, education that they provide and also um, giving some recognition to the excellent programs that are out there. Of course, uh, Tanya, uh, the, the Society's uh, university outreach programs have been incredibly successful to date. Uh, SOA staff and volunteers have met with over 3,100 students at 62 colleges and universities across the U.S., Canada and Asia. This spring, our team has visited Duke, University of North Carolina, which I know is close to your heart. I support the second, maybe not the first. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, hopefully their actuarial program will be better than their uh, uh, basketball team that okay. was this year. But uh, <laughs> um, right, Now we're going to have to have <laughs> disagreement on the leadership team. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Simon Fraser and the and, uh, University of British uh, Columbia, um, University of Michigan, Vanderbilt University, uh, 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 lots of breadth. Uh, next week our team will visit Howard University, and if past visits are any indication, they're expecting a warm welcome and a lively discussion with students and faculty. Anyone interested in learning more about the university outreach program should visit our, uh, its website, riskisopportunity.net. I can tell you that during my presidential term, I've, I've uh, visited a, a number of uh, uh, universities with actuarial programs, uh, uh, just uh, uh, outstanding uh, universities uh, uh, in the U.S., Canada. Uh, next week I'll be uh, uh, in Hong Kong, visit China University, uh, Hong Kong University, uh, met uh, with a number of universities, uh, students in India and China, Temple University, Penn State, University of Illinois, which I'm from, which uh, we don't need to talk about their basketball program. Oh, let's uh, do. Let's we'll get into that in detail. University of Wisconsin uh, has a fantastic program. The University of Nebraska was incredibly welcoming to to me, uh, uh, and uh, so uh, uh, and, and and Mary Hardy in Canada and and her students uh, were uh, fantastic, and uh, I appreciate the reception we get. Uh, whether it's me or anybody else representing the, uh, the, the Society of Actuaries gets, it's truly one of the most uh, rewarding things that you can do and uh, certainly one of the most rewarding things I've done uh, um, as a presidential officer uh, um, for the SOA. Yeah, Brad, I agree with you. I, I look forward to having many more visits. I visited one university so far, Columbia, and it was amazing just talking to the students. I think it's going to do a lot to um, help them better understand us, but it's also going to give us good opportunity to have input on how we can 
strengthen our relationship with candidates. That's one of the current initiatives that we have underway that I think is very important, that we have um, a better communication and connection with these students. They have a lot to offer, and I'm really interested in figuring out how we can um, better integrate them into meeting the goals of the SOA and helping them develop, not just through the examinations, but also just through opportunities to um, get involved in volunteering and showing their leadership qualities. So I'm, I'm very excited about um, participating more of those university outreach. I think they're going to be very informative to us in our strategy. Thanks, Tanya. Um, question um, on regarding principal-based reserving. Um, with that on the horizon, um, has the SOA been thinking about um, where there might be opportunities for volunteer resources to serve on groups um, uh, that would be addressing um, various types of experience studies that might be required. And Greg, I know this is something that, that you've been um, working on. Uh, sure, Pat. I'll be happy to give a couple of comments on that. The, the SOA and, and the board in particular are very focused uh, on research activities and research strategy. Last fall, uh, the board uh, spent a good deal of time uh, working on and, and revamping our practice area research. And we have an initiative underway this year to do the same with our experience studies uh, research activities. So uh, it's definitely an area that uh, members have identified uh, uh, as being important to us, uh, something that we're uh, heavily involved in. And we have a lot of people, uh, uh, particularly on the volunteer side, working on it right now. Uh, we're clearly always, we do expect with uh, uh, the onset of PBR, uh, the need for more experience studies, different types of experience studies. So we are uh, preparing ourselves for that, and we're certainly always interested in finding people to work on those projects. My experience has been that if you've got exciting and interesting projects that are really relevant to members, you do get the volunteers that you need for it, and I, I would expect that to be the case uh, in this uh, area as well. Thanks, Greg. And Brad, you know, I know you and I were talking a little bit earlier on, um, on exam registration numbers overall. Um, I don't know that you'll recall those um, off the top of your head, but I, um, I'm going to pass you a piece of paper that, that has some of those um, statistics. I think, it's, I think it's interesting information. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, you wonder, I mean, again, we, uh, uh, as Tanya mentioned, we were number two uh, with respect to uh, um, the actual oil profession uh, uh, being a, a top-rated job. Uh, uh, I think that that draws uh, uh, students, uh, bright, uh, uh, ambitious students to the profession, uh, and it just continues our growth and, and, and uh uh, the the which can only lead to greater influence of the actual profession uh, in the you know the societal problems that we face. Uh, we're tracking ahead of last year at the same time, comparing March 31st, 2011 to March 31st, 2012. We're up by mo more than 3,400 registrations, and then not necessarily comparing apples to apples because our 2011 figures don't include all fellowship exams, uh, only the CSP exams that were offered in the spring of 2011. So uh, uh, the, 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 the numbers aren't exactly comparable, but uh, indicate that uh, um, you know up is better than down, and, and we're certainly up. Great, thanks. Um, we've had um, um, a few people um, point out, and I know it's, a, it's an area that, um, uh, that I think you both mentioned when we were talking about general insurance. And it was this need to um, educate employers about this and, and make sure that they're aware of it um, as, um, as the track is being developed and, and you know, be, as it's introduced. Can you talk a little bit more about um, what it is that they're going to need to, um, you know, what we can help them understand and, and, and take away from um, what we're planning to do? Yeah, well, I think we uh, clearly, Pat, this is going to be a, a, a challenge for you and your uh, communication group because we're going to have to, to make the case that, uh, that in fact, uh, um, you know, the Society of Actuaries is, is qualified to uh, uh, educate and, and, and develop uh, uh, general insurance professionals. I don't think that that's going to be uh, difficult uh, internationally. Uh, uh, the society credential is... Uh, uh, readily recognized as, as um, um, a world-leading credential, if not the world-leading credential. And certainly in the United States and, and Canada, uh, it, it, it's the same. Um, you know, the resist are we going to meet some resistance with respect to um, uh, casualty employers that w have gone through uh, the CAS exams and, and resent that the Society of Actuaries 
uh, is doing this. Uh, it's quite possible, but uh, I think that the quality of the student that that we're going to bring to the table is going to, uh, uh, you know, uh, make us, uh, the, uh, you know, impossible to ignore, quite frankly. And uh, we're committed to to developing, uh, uh, you know, uh, professionals of the highest quality. And uh, we think that uh, by offering the, uh, you know, a full uh, slate of, of disciplines and a full slate of education, we will draw actually uh, the, the highest quality student, which will in turn uh, result in us producing the highest quality professional. So that uh, is this a possible, you know, bump in the road uh, uh, in the process? Sure, but uh, uh, it's not one that, that I have long-term concerns about. Yeah, I agree with you, Brad. I think the market, as we always say, the market ultimately decides. The market wants high-quality candidates, and that is certainly what we intend to produce with our exam process. Thanks, and Brad. We had um, uh, one person note that as we were talking about um, various universities that the SOA has been at that um, uh, it didn't sound like we um, had ventured west of the Mississippi. Well, I would certainly, uh, yeah, I'm open to and have not uh, actually uh, turned down any uh, invitations to uh, visit any universities and uh, having just uh, uh, purchased uh, a place in California, I would love uh, to visit uh, uh, any place uh, west of the Mississippi and particularly uh, any schools in uh, California and uh, living in Texas now, uh, I'm open to all invitations. I know Tanya is uh, uh, aggressively pursuing those invitations also so that send them in because uh, 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 we both love to, to do it and find it very gratifying and, uh, um, and in fact, uh, have, uh, um, have done, the, done so and, and will continue to do so. Right. It's, it's a very rewarding experience. I, I will say it is even more rewarding when it's in a nice, sunny place in Southern California. So, yeah, it's certainly no intention to isolate ourselves to the East Coast. Thanks. You know, we have just um, uh, a minute or two before we wrap up, and um, while we've gotten far more questions than we could ever try to answer, um, we will address a lot of them going forward on the SOA blog. Um, but before we close, Tanya, Brad, anything that you wanted to say in closing? Go ahead. Okay. I, I would just say I, I appreciate this opportunity to be able to provide this information and have some questions come in and be able to answer the few that we were able to get to. We know we have many more, and we'll work to make sure that we are listening to our members and candidates and we are providing you with the information. We've got a lot of different ways that we're doing that now, so hopefully you're aware of them and leveraging them, not just this webcast or print publications. We've got blogs, and we've got Facebook, and we've got Twitter. So we've got lots of different ways we're trying to reach out to you, so please don't be shy and let us know your thoughts, um, particularly on the strategic plan. And um, thanks um, also, as Brad mentioned, to all our volunteers. I did not realize it was Volunteer Week next week, so I am very excited about that. So thanks to all our volunteers who make this organization work. Yeah, and let, let me just reiterate that, that uh, uh, I mean, in, incredibly gratified by the support that we've gotten. Uh, uh, you know, clearly we're doing a lot of uh, uh, new and, and, and very aggressive and ambitious things this year. And uh, uh, by addressing, uh, you know, initially consolidation and now uh, uh, the, the, uh, the other elements of the strategic plan, including uh, the tactic of uh, offering general insurance uh, uh, um, uh, 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 general insurance credential, and uh, um, I know it's made some of you uncomfortable, and, and uh, we encourage you to communicate with us aggressively, and, uh, uh, and, and I know that uh, uh, I appreciate, uh, know and appreciate the support that uh, many of you have shown uh, to both Tanya I and Greg and, and, and the other board members, and, uh, you know, uh, we have the best interest of, uh, uh, of the Society of Actuaries, its members, and the actual profession at heart uh, in all of these tactics in support of the uh, strategic plan, and, and appreciate your support and appreciate you reaching out and communicating your thoughts to us. Again, thank you. And thank you, Brad. Thank you, Tanya. Um, we have come to the end of our time. Thank you so much for, um, for joining us today. Um, there will be a short evaluation survey um, coming up very shortly, and we really do um, welcome your comments and look forward to your feedback. So with that, thanks, and have a great day, everyone.